This video will show you Redwoods National Park and State Parks, especially if you are traveling there with an RV and with your children. We'll highlight um, logistics on how to get there and driving around and things like that. And then we'll go through our trip report and show you various different places and give you some tips and tricks on those locations. And then lastly, we always end by trying to give you some recommendations on camping and where to stay. So thanks for watching. Let's get right to it. So I always like to start with some logistics about getting to the park and where the parks are located and things like that. And someday I'll be fancy enough to do this digitally, but for now, you don't have it on a computer. You've got a map here in my hands. Okay, so Redwoods National Park and the state parks are here in Northern California. So in terms of other parks, if you were trying to do this as a road trip and go to other places, we had actually come from Crater Lake beforehand and we headed over to Grants Pass and then took this Highway 199 over and it crosses from the Oregon and California border and then comes into Crescent City. And this distance from Crater Lake to Crescent City, I think takes about four to five hours. I think it takes about four hours in the car. It probably took us closer to five. And then really the Redwoods go all the way from Crescent City down by Eureka and then further south you have Humboldt State Park and I'll show you that on the zoomed in map. The other national park you have in this area is Lassen Volcanic National Park which after doing Crater Lake heading over to Redwoods we then headed over to Lassen and that's probably the Redwoods over to Lassen's about a five to six hour drive depending on if you're in the southern part of the Redwoods or the northern part. So let's zoom in to this stretch over here where the Redwoods are actually at. This is a map of Northern California. You can see here's the Oregon border. So we came through Highway 199, which goes here through Jedediah Smith Redwoods State Park, which is beautiful to see. That's where Stout Grove is at. I'll show you that in the videos. Um, we stayed in Crescent City, which was a nice uh, location. You have a lot of stuff going on in Crescent City, nice access to the coast and stuff as well. And then if you head along this stretch, you get down to Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park and there's a beautiful bypass road. We'll talk about that and drive that. And then um, that's kind of around the town of Oric or just north of that. And you have a bit, a lot of the areas like tall trees and stuff down here. Then we actually headed south from Eureka pretty much or before Eureka and we took this 299 to get out to Lassen. If you were to continue down the 101, you would continue taking this down and you would end up going through Humboldt Redwoods State Park around here. And this is that area where Avenue of the Giants is located. And so this is a beautiful area a lot of people love to see. We just didn't have time to do this trek since we were heading off to Lassen. So let's uh, highlight and go through some of the stuff right here. When you go to the visitor center, they have, they weren't open this year because of COVID, but they do have these big uh, kind of magazine pamphlets that have a lot of information and it includes a map. We picked this up at the Crescent City Visitor Center, so that might be why it just has the Northern Redwood Parks. It does not include Humboldt State Park on here, but that was fine because we weren't actually heading that way. There's a visitor center over here. This one was not open it, by the Jedediah Smith Redwoods State Park. But in this area, you can come down. You're not going to be able to get your RV out to where the Stout Grove trailhead is at. You're going to need a, a different car. It's just really tight. The road is narrow. It may even have turned to dirt at some point in time. I don't know that it was asphalt the whole way. So this is to get to Stout Grove, you're definitely going to need a separate vehicle. You're not going to be able to take your RV for that. But Stout Grove is amazing. There's a wonderful hike. It's probably only a mile or so it has a loop at the end so then it just takes you back to the entrance where you came in from and i'll show you that in the video there's also a road i can't see it on this one there's a there's a road over here that's kind of a dirt road you can take vehicles on it um, and you can have your pets on it so if you really want to take your pet with you they have to be on a leash and you can take that route but you cannot take them into Stout Grove. You can't take them into most places. So it's definitely the kind of place where if you have a pet with you, it's better to leave them at the RV um, if you can. You know, we like to run our dog in the morning and then she's nice and exhausted and she can hang out while we're heading to the parks for the day. Over here, Crescent City, you can see there's a big city that's here. They've got a bunch of different things that you need and you know, Walgreens and all that kind of stuff. And then we liked coming out and seeing the lighthouse. So hanging out kind of in the pier. And then we also did this 
uh, drive out to Point St. George and did a bit of a hike. And I'll show you that in the video. And then we took the 101 down, enjoyed this beautiful view. And then at the point, a little bit lower, you get past Klamath. This would be a good space to stay too. Nice access. Um, there is the Newton Drury Scenic Parkway, and you definitely want to take this. It doesn't matter if you're in an RV or a vehicle, you can definitely do this in an RV, but this is exit 765. Do not miss this. This will be one of the best highlights of the trip, and you can go down this scenic parkway, and I'll show you it in the video. There's multiple steps where you can just pull over with your vehicle, hike around. Um, there's interpretive signs and stations to talk about the trees and the wildlife and all that great stuff. So this was a great scenic byway to take. And then the other thing that we did in our Jeep, we couldn't have done this in the rig, but we took this Davidson Road out to Gold Bluffs and then you park here at the trailhead and we did the hike into Fern Canyon. So I will show you all of those things in the video. If we had an extra couple days, we originally had planned on staying on the south part of town down here. And then we had wanted to try to get a permit and do the hike out to tall trees, but we had to cut our trip short by two days. So we didn't have the two days on the south side. We only had the three overnights up here in Crescent City. So we ended up not doing that part, but I'll show you all the rest of it. The first place we visited was the Jedediah Smith Redwoods state park area and as you drive in there you'll need to have a, a separate vehicle you can't drive your rv into here but as we drove there there's a spot where you can park and then you walk on this dirt trail along the smith river and you can walk all the way out to stout grove and this is probably only about half a mile or so out to stout grove and then it loops around and it'll take you back so it's not very far to walk there's nothing too difficult or steep so it wouldn't be a tough hike for little kids or if you had any problems or anything else but there's just a whole area of adventure and fun things to see it's right along the smith river and i guess the river will frequently flood and what that means is that there's not a lot of understory growth under the trees like down along the base so you don't end up with this big lush vegetation like you have in a lot of other groves instead you really just can appreciate these super tall magnificent redwoods that shoot up into the sky and a number of them have fallen over you can see there there's one that was burned at some point in time but there's places where they've just fallen over and the kids can kind of climb and hike around and enjoy it and our girls just thought this was a magical place and they kept turning everything into a pirate ship or some other adventure and it was a lot of fun for them so highly recommend this for families i think this should be one of the probably top three highlights in places that you go to visit on your visit to the redwoods national parks and state parks Part of the reason the Redwoods are such a spectacular place to visit with your kids is because you really can feel like you are just an ant in this tiny surrounding. And these giant trees just make you feel like something kind of small and insignificant, but in a wonderful, beautiful way. So that's part of the reason we love visiting here. After this, we headed into Crescent City for the afternoon. Crescent City is a pretty large sized city. You definitely have, you know, grocery stores, Walgreens, things like that here. So you can buy different resources and things that you might need during your travels. There's a cool lighthouse out that you can see from the harbor. There apparently is a marine mammal center too on Front Street. We didn't get to visit that during COVID. I'm sure it was closed, but there's also some beach access and different places where you can hang out on the water. The swells were really high. They actually had a warning about swells being 11 feet high. So nobody's in the water, as you can see, and we did not get in the water, but did enjoy seeing some seals and hanging out and even hiking out to Point St. George. You can take your vehicle out here. You actually could even take an RV, I guess, to where the parking lot is at. And then you can hike out further from Point St. George and get to a point where you actually have the airplanes coming in from the airfield that's right by there and they're literally just flying right above you and right over you and that was really fun to see. 
The next day we headed south on the 101 towards Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park. And this is something you definitely can do in your RV on 101. You can take the 101 all the way from Washington down through Oregon um, and continuing to head south into Northern California. So this is actually a great route and what part of the goal was on our trip. But anyway, this is what that looks like on that highway. So you're just talking about two lanes. Um, sometimes there was construction, things like that, but it really wasn't that bad. There's trees just surrounding you on all sides. And we did that bypass road, like I talked about, the Newton Drury Scenic Byway. And you definitely want to take that byway. You can do it in the RV. There's plenty of stops to pull over um, and different signs and things to look at. And I'll show you more of those videos. I thought that this area did one of the best jobs in terms of having signs and maps that can show you different hiking trails and places where to go and where you're at. Lots of things were labeled so you knew things like the heights of the trees that you were seeing and which direction would take you to see other great trees. Um, particularly I love this Dr. Seuss-ish like <laughs> sign big trees this way, even bigger trees this way. So really just a cool little bypass. Definitely worth stopping on that scenic highway and checking that out. From there, we went further south and caught Davidson Road, which you're seeing here. This is not something you're going to do in an RV, but it'll take you out to Gold Bluffs Beach. You can hike around and see the beach. We did that for a little while. We just kind of headed out to the ocean. Briefly, we were keeping our hiking boots on and all that kind of stuff, but we just wanted to check out the ocean when we first got into that area. Then we proceeded to take the trailhead for Fern Canyon. I highly recommend putting Fern Canyon on your list as one of the things to see. It's really beautiful, amazing, and it's not that difficult of a hike. I think maybe it's about a half of a mile to get out there, not bad at all. The canyon follows Home Creek, which apparently goes through this canyon floor. It's carved out the canyon over time, so it's about 50 to 80 feet deep. And on the walls where it has been carved out, there's just ferns and growth of different vegetation all over. There's a bit of water depending on the time of year that you're there. We were here the third week of September, so you still have quite a bit of water. If you go a little bit later in the fall before winter hits, you may not have a lot of water that you have to wade through, but we did have quite a bit of water, so be prepared for that. We had waterproof boots, but at Points, you're so deep in the water that it was actually above our boots so the smarter thing to do would have been to bring some sort of water shoes that we could have switched into so we could have taken off our hiking boots put on the water shoes and then it wouldn't have mattered that our feet were getting soaked because I ended up falling off of a log and then into calf deep water and I just was soaked for the rest of the afternoon so my feet were soaked for the rest of the hike here and um, the other places that we ended up going that day. So I highly recommend to bring some sort of water shoes with you. The vegetation and stuff on the ground is not the kind of thing you're going to want to do barefoot. You're going to be walking on logs and whatnot, but bring some water shoes, you know, Keens, Tevas, stuff like that, so that you are a little bit more prepared to handle wading through the water. Apparently there's five different types of fern plants that line the walls. You can see some of those here. And depending on the time of year, you might see water kind of dripping off of the walls and dripping down, which we definitely had the time of year when we went. We just absolutely love Fern Canyon. I highly recommend putting that on your list of things to do. And since our feet were already soaked, why not head back over to Gold Bluff Beach and take off our shoes and socks and run around in the water for a while. Water was pretty cold, wasn't as cold as it was further north up in Washington and stuff where we were at, but uh, definitely if you wanted to spend a lot of time in that water, I would suggest having a wetsuit with you. We then made our way out of the pothole dirt road of Davidson Road and started heading back up and went by Trees of Mystery. So Trees of Mystery is a cool kind of touristy place. This is part of the Redwoods that's actually owned by a private company. And so they have things like 
tree canopies and all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't see in the national parks or state parks. So it's the kind of place that you can check out if you want to do some of that stuff. It's $20 for an adult and $11 for a kid. And we headed over by there and it was quarter to five and they closed at 530. So we didn't find it was worth the money to just be in there for about 40 minutes. But I think if you had a bit of time and your kids want to be able to explore the redwoods in that way, then it might be a good stop. As you're traveling on the 101, there's multiple places where you can just pull over and enjoy the views of the ocean or even get out and walk by the water or on the water. As you can see, the swells were getting pretty high and it was really foggy and not just foggy, but we were also dealing with some of the smoke from the California wildfires that were going on this time of year at the third week of September, but very beautiful, plenty of places to easily stop. At one point, we even drove up by a herd of elk that were just eating grass off on the side of the road. Now let's talk about camping options. Another great thing the visitor guide has is this section about developed campgrounds. But if you're like me, you don't wanna just pull into a national park and then find out that there's nowhere for you to camp, right? You wanna plan this stuff ahead of time. So I'm going to zoom in and hopefully you can pause this if you wanna look at some of these details. You can see that nobody has hookups when it comes to actually being in either the forest service or at the parks. So um, if that doesn't bother you, then that's fine. But if you need hookups, like we leave the dog in the RV and we need to make sure that we have either heat or air conditioning or whatever she needs to be comfortable. So we tend to want to stay somewhere where we have access to hookups when we have the dog with us. Um, or because sometimes you can run generators, but sometimes it's only for so many hours in the day and you don't want to have to keep going back to power up your generator or stop it. The other thing is you can see here under RV max length. I mean, we don't even, some of these places in the forest service, we might be able to fit. This is all the way up in Oregon. Okay, that's a little far from the destination. So you can see that really most of the places wouldn't accommodate our Super C, especially with towing the Jeep behind it. So not necessarily the best options for a large rig, but here's the details on all those if you do want to make a reservation and try to stay at one of those locations. We ended up staying at the Crescent City KOA, which was in a great location for Crescent City, Jedediah, State Park and then even for a day trip down to Fern Canyon and Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park worked out just fine as well. And we have a whole review about this KOA that gives you a little bit more details. I think ultimately it would have been nice to spend a few days camped in the north end like Crescent City and then a night or two camped further south either in Klamath or even down as far as maybe Eureka and that way you can really have easier access traveling to the various parts of the park but it just didn't work out for us in having enough time to do it like that. On our fourth day, we continued out that 101 heading south and started working our way towards Lassen Volcanic National Park. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It gave you some ideas about visiting the Redwoods, especially in terms of traveling there with an RV and visiting it with your kids. Thanks so much for watching. We are RV Homeschool. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We have plenty of other videos about camping, national parks, having an RV, all sorts of good stuff like that. So feel free to subscribe and thank you so much for watching.